Standard precautions it includes the minimum infection prevention practices that apply to all patient care regardless of the suspected or confirmed infection status of the patient in any setting where healthcare is delivered. These practices are aimed at protecting patients and healthcare providers from the spread of infections. What are these standard precautions? These are the basic protection against infection. It includes hand hygiene, respiratory hygiene and cough etiquette, use of personal protective equipment, safe injection practices, safe handling of potentially contaminated equipment or surfaces in the patient environment. Imagine if germs could be seen with our naked eye. We will see the germs on the commonly touched surfaces in the patient environment, such as the handrails, the coli, and the telephone. These germs can survive in the environment as everyone should regularly perform hand hygiene before and after touching the patient and after touching the patient's environment. What is hand hygiene? Hand hygiene is the most effective way to prevent the spread of infection in the hospital setting. Uh, it can refer to any action of hand cleansing. So it can be hand rubbing or hand washing. When we do our hygienic hand rub or hand rubbing, we apply an antiseptic hand rub to reduce or inhibit the growth of microorganisms without the need for an exogenous source of water and requiring no rinsing or drying with towels or other devices. Wherein, in hand washing, we are washing our hands with plain or antimicrobial soap and water. So when do we do hand rubbing or hand washing? Hand rubbing is the preferred means for routine antisepsis. If your hands are not visibly soiled, then you can do hand rubbing. In hand washing, we do hand washing when our hands are visibly dirty or visibly soiled with blood or body fluids. After using the toilet, we do hand washing. And if also we are handling potentially spore-forming pathogens, or if you have exposure to potentially spore-forming pathogens like Clostridoides difficile or Bacillus anthracis, hand washing is strongly recommended. Patient-to-patient -patient transmissions on pathogens via healthcare worker hands requires these five sequential steps. We assume that all our patients and their surroundings are infectious. So if you touch your patients or their environment, germs will be transferred to your hands. The germs can survive on your hands and if you fail to perform hand hygiene and you touch another patient, then the germs will be transferred to that, that patient. Hand hygiene is important to break this germ transmission. We have two posters available in our hospital to guide you on the proper steps of hand rubbing and hand washing. So for hand rubbing, we have this poster, how to hand rub. So rub hands for hand hygiene. So if you have a visibly soiled hands, then you should wash your hands. The duration of the entire procedure is 20 to 30 seconds. Of course, number one is you have to apply a palm pool of products in a cap hands covering all surfaces. So we have different uh, alcohol gel available in the hospital. So we have the automatic and the pump style dispenser. And then we will perform the six steps of hand hygiene. Number one is you have to rub your hands palm to palm. Then right palm over left dorsum with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Afterwards, palm to palm with fingers interlaced. And then back of fingers to opposing palm with fingers interlaced. After that, you have to do rotational rubbing of left thumb, clubs in right palm and vice versa. And then the last step is rotational rubbing backwards and forwards with glass fingers of right hand and left palm and vice versa. And then once dry, your hands are now safe. For hand washing, the difference is we are using soap and water and the duration of the entire procedure is 40 to 60 seconds. Okay, number one is you have to wet your hands with water. Apply enough soap to cover all surfaces. And then proceed to the six steps of hand hygiene. Grab hands palm to palm, 
right palm overlap dorsum with fin interlaced fingers and vice versa. Palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Back of fingers to opposing palm with fingers interlock. Rotational rubbing of left thumb class in right palm and vice versa. Rotational rubbing backwards and forwards where class finger of right hand and left palm and vice versa. And then afterwards, you have to rinse hands with water. Dry hands thoroughly with a single use towel. And remember to use towel to turn off the faucet to avoid contamination of hands. And then now your hands are now safe. These slides show you the common we miss areas of our hands if we miss to perform the proper hand hygiene technique. We usually miss to clean our fingertips, in between fingers, and also our thumb. By performing the proper hand hygiene technique, we will be able to clean all the surfaces of our hands. We already know the proper steps of hand hygiene. Now the question is, when are we going to perform hand hygiene? According to WHO, we have five moments for hand hygiene. These are the moments wherein staff should perform hand hygiene. Moment number one is before touching a patient. We have to perform hand hygiene for this moment for the safety of our patient. We don't want to transfer microorganism from our hands to our patient. So we perform hand hygiene before touching our patient. Number two, or moment number two, is before doing our septic procedure. Before you do any procedure to your patient, you have to perform hand hygiene. Moment number three is after body fluid exposure is. Of course, you have to protect yourself. So if you have exposure to any body fluid, such as blood, urine, saliva, etc., you have to perform hand hygiene. Moment number four is after touching patient. So perform hand hygiene after touching your patient. Moment number five is after touching patient surroundings. Patient surroundings are also considered as infectious. Thus, even if you only touch the patient's environment, you have to perform hand hygiene. According to WHO survey in 2013, the hand hygiene compliance for moment one or before touching patient globally is 67.2%. The compliance rate per category shows that nurses had the highest compliance to hand hygiene with 64% compliance rate, followed by AIDS and order yes with 58% compliance rate. Then auxiliaries like medtex, Radtex, physical therapists, and other ancillary services with 50% compliance rate. And the least compliant is our doctors with only 48% compliance rate. How do we do monitoring of hand hygiene here in Mahatimed? For Mahatimed, IBC monitors compliance to hand hygiene of all MMC staff. We do direct observation for one hour. We monitor moment one or before patient contact. 60 units are monitored quarterly and five critical care units are monitored monthly. Surveillance findings and reports include names of healthcare workers who comply or do not comply to hand hygiene. This is the formula that we use in computing hand hygiene compliance rate of the unit. For example, we have 10 hand hygiene observations for one hour monitor. Out of the 10 observations, 8 perform hand hygiene and 2 needs to perform hand hygiene. Then you have to, uh, the numerator in this observation is 8 and the denominator is 10 times 100, and that's the compliance rate of the unit. So the compliance rate is 8 divided by 10 times 100 is 80%. This graph shows the overall hand hygiene compliance from 2018 to second quarter of 2020. MMC hand hygiene compliance rate are about the 67.2% compliance rate of WHO. 
In 2019, our average hand hygiene compliance is 93%. For first quarter of 2020, there is a decrease in hand hygiene compliance with only 80% compliance rate. Please take note that not all units were monitored due to lockdown and closure of outpatient centers and some inpatient units due to COVID-19. However, in second quarter 2020, the compliance rate increased to 96%, 96%, which is good. Hand hygiene is still one of the measures to prevent the transmission of COVID-19 infection. For professional category, the hand hygiene compliance of nurses, doctors, auxiliaries, and other healthcare workers are above 95% compliance rate. Among our doctors, the most compliant are our consultants and residents for first two quarters of 2020. Remember that hand hygiene champions are being recognized. At the end of the year, IPC gives certificate of recognition signed by our department manager, ICC chairman, and our medical director, and a token of appreciation to all hand hygiene champions. Of course, non compliances are reflected on the following. For employees, it is reflected on the performance appraisal, and for doctors, it is reflected on the annual evaluation. These are an example of uh, posters created by different units to strengthen hand hygiene practices hospital-wide. Uh, this is a reminder that if you are handling patient infected with C. difficile, you should perform hand washing using soap and water since according to studies, alcohol is not effective against C. difficile spores. Another reminder, Gloves do not replace the need for hand hygiene. Hand hygiene should be performed before wearing and after removing gloves. If you are assigned in the COVID areas, you have to perform hand hygiene on glove hands. Personal hygiene. Healthy workers can be a source of infection. Staff working in patient care areas should observe the following. For the hand and nails, always perform hand hygiene. Wash hands with soap and water if hands are visibly soiled or if it got the with patients infected with C. difficile. Keep the natural hair nails short. Do not wear nail polish, artificial fingernails, or nail extenders. For the hair, you have to keep your hair neat and clean. Hair must be short, tied back. Secured away from the face and off the collar. Bird and mustache must be kept trimmed short and clean. For the jewelry, do not wear rings, bracelets, and other jewelry during patient care. Wear a fab watch or a wristwatch that can be easily disinfected. For footwear, all footwear should have close toes and backs and non skid soles. Shoes must be tidy. It must be made of material that is easy to clean. For our clothing, like medical coats, scrub suits, surgical attire, and uniform, of course, you have to wear clean clothing daily. Clothing soiled with blood or body fluid must be changed immediately. Avoid direct contact of medical coats sleep with patient or patient's environment. Wear protective personal equipment or PPE appropriately and discard immediately after use. Do not use lanyards when performing patient cares. Wearing of stethoscope around the neck is discouraged. Remove unnecessary items such as staff ties or eye divans attached to stethoscope. Use of any pack belts during patient care is also discouraged. <laughs>